Good morning and hey howdy. Right here, six inches of destiny, six inches of justice right here. We're talking about this and doing the twist. Uh, 2,530 of you monstrously amazing subscribers, thank you. For those of you who are watching and haven't done that yet, click like, subscribe, join the crazy train because we're doing some great stuff. here back with our FS140, uh, obviously one of my favorite surge protectors. Here's why VPR is important. It's one of the few ratings of all the different ways to describe a surge protector that you can't really mess with, okay? There's very strict UL standards for um, how much voltage is let through, and that's what VPR is. In other words, most of the, the better surge protectors have a VPR of 600 volts or less. Okay, so the lower that number is, the better the surge protector. And what that means is, let's say there was a, a 3,000 volt monster coming into your, into your house, it hits the surge protector, what the FS140 is gonna do is not let anything over 600 come through. So the other, let's do the math, the other 2,600 volts is getting shunted to earth or is getting blocked, okay? So the ideal is five times your line voltage to ground, so, if we have 120 volts, five times that 600 volts, we want 600 volts on your VPR or less, okay? So that's great. So here's why I'm talking about this. When UL does their testing, you get these cool stickers, right? And then we're all looking at specs. They do their tests with a six inch lead. Here I've marked it. That's not very long. We've got 36 inches of leads on this FS140 a lot of surge protectors will come with 24 inch or 18 inch. I've looked at all, or four of them, the installation guides, and of course they all say keep those leads as short as possible. So I've got some information to help reinforce that, and that is what effect does longer leads have on that VPR? That's the deal, right? And a couple of you have been trying to kind of cue me that way, and I'm not always the uh, the quickest guy to understand what's going on. Sometimes my bus shows up a few minutes late. I can't help it. We work hard, we do what we can. So there's, and we're gonna reference this, Merston, or Merson, which makes a bunch of MOVs that go into a ton of surge protectors, they did a study. So we've got, I'm just gonna hold these up, just for my sake. They're showing, here's a standard uh, graph with a, uh, surge protector is a VPR 600, but what it does, and this is really cool, and I want you guys to look at this, it shows you what happens to your VPR, how much it goes up, which again, we don't want. We want it to stay or go down as you lengthen those leads. So for instance, uh, line to neutral on a six inch lead, we have 600 volts. That's what's tested for, that's why we buy it. But if I go up in that column and, I, and the lead or the conductor length is now 36 inches, my VPR jumps up to 1200 volts. It doubles. That sucks. We don't want that. Um, all of those, all of those numbers go up. So we're going to the panel. Here's the challenge, right? We want the best VPR. We're paying the money. We're getting it installed. It's like buying a car. We did all that research. Bam, we did it. And then we end up in having to install it. And because of framing, blocking, who knows what, we end up with a lot longer leads. So the upshot practically is, if you're not keeping those leads short, you're not installing what you bought. You're installing something with a lot lower standard. So let's go to the panel. So here we've already got an, an Eaton Ultra. And the same thing, if I move this breaker down here, I'm pretty close to that, six, that magic six inches. Okay, so let's put out the tape and keep it away from the live busing. That would work. So simple fix on this, if I simply move this down, I would actually be at the VPR that Eaton wants me to have and what I paid for, okay? So this is easy. This is a garage sub panel. It's almost empty. But what about in your panels with your houses, like in Texas, 
200 amp main panel, 42 circuits, there's wire everywhere. Usually these side chases are packed. And so if I was, if this was packed and I needed to put this in here, which is a, physically a much larger surge protector, how am I gonna do that and still keep my leads closer to that ideal six inches? Super hard. Um, there is a solution. So the other thing I wanna talk about this is a lot of times I've come after people and, and they've put that surge protector inside the panel and we could say it was because they were keeping their lead length short. The downside is on the majority of different brands of surge protector, how is the homeowner gonna know what the status is on their surge protector? Like out here, if I had put this uh, SPD, this Eaton inside the panel and closed it back up, the average homeowner isn't gonna know what's going on. So if that thing gets toasted, how would he know? He wouldn't. Uh, with the Siemens, the FS140, the only upside is they have an audible alarm. So hopefully, the homeowner hears that nagging beeping and decides to figure it out if this was inside and call an electrician and figure it out. But to me, that's not very ideal at all. So fortunately, there's Meerson's study on the voltage, how the VPR was affected by leads gives us a solution. And this is where we start getting twisty. So let's take a look at that. So the same table here shows um, the same thing, the VPR, how it's affected by the lead length but with two interesting variations. One is uh, zip tying the wires very close together, and the second is twisting those wires up. So let's go back to the 36 inch length. If we twist those wires, I can't help myself. If we twist these wires, bunch of twists. And there's some practical issues here too as well, because at some point you have to untwist them to land them on your bus. So let's say we have a bunch of twists. Bunch, bunch, lots. Wow, these are number 10s. They are not wanting to twist. So if we twist these bad boys up, what will happen is if we have a 36 inch lead length, instead of having a 1200 volt VPR, it goes down to 700 volts. So let's say on this, let's say we couldn't keep these, I'm looking at the table, let's say if these leads had to be 24 inches, which is kind of realistic depending on the panel, the framing, if these are 24 inches long and we had twists in this, our VPR drops back down to 600 volts. That's a, that's a win, okay? So I was thinking about the practicality of how do we get our, our ratings and how do we maintain that VPR. And so anyway, it's just a, a, an observation. The interesting part in most of the installation, only Eaton Ultra on their installation says, put twists in the wires. All the other installations of the four I looked at basically say keep the wire straight and keep them as short as possible, no bends. So again, for you guys who are having to install and work out the practicalities, we have all these cool technical specs, right? But when you're out standing in front of your breaker box and it's packed and you gotta figure out, hey, I want surge protection, how do I do this and get the best result? You're gonna do the twist. Because unless you're willing to bury that uh, surge protector inside your panel, which I wouldn't do, you're going to have to find a way to offset your loss because of the length of those leads. Do the twist, and that's what you want to do. Um, that in the six inch U UL listing uh, is a sobering reminder. Uh, sometimes just making something fit isn't as good as doing the twist. Look forward to hearing your questions and comments. We're back for the PS. You guys do great work. I see the comments. I see other videos, other channels. Miraculous. You've got to remember one thing, though. Grounding. FS140 installation instructions talks about the grounding, but it's like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 James, grounding. No, without proper and correct grounding, these surge protectors don't work well at all. Here we go, point eight on the FS140. And again, applies across the board. Make sure the system is bonded per NEC and is clear of hazards or faults before energizing. Neutral to ground bonding not per NEC will fail the SBD. The number one cause of SBD failures, according to Siemens. So here's the thing. We're busy, right? We're out there doing the miracle. We're hustling electrons, making the world safer. 
got four more jobs on your schedule, are you checking that the system has correct grounding electrode connection? I'm going to guess not, okay? Because we're busy and why wouldn't it? Not my problem, blah, blah, blah. But we're installing this device with this infamous VPR. We're doing these beautiful twists. And if our grounding is not correct or if it's not what we assumed it was, that SPD will not perform, okay? So you say, well, why should, you know, it's not a problem. Let me tell you the problems. I have seen so many ground rods that were driven either too high or too far out from the, the house. Uh, lawnmower or somebody doing whatever, I see an a acorn or a clamp on the acorn with a little stub of number six on it solid, and it's broken off. No ground rod. I've seen plumbers come in, change a water heater. In Texas, we have a lot of clamps on the incoming water to bond that copper cold water system. Uh, they change the water heater. They take off the clamp because, of course, it's going to be in the way. It shouldn't. Different issue. Uh, they put their new water heater in. Bada bing, they're gone. They never put the clamp back on. Cold water bonding, gone. Doesn't take much, okay? It's something worth looking at. It makes the whole thing work. After we looked at all the fancy specs, all the glossy literature, photos of things exploding, we don't have a connection to Earth. Uh, doesn't work. Doesn't work well at all. Keep that in mind. Thank you for being awesome. Look forward to hearing your comments and questions. Like and subscribe.